These are the things we use uh, when we arrive at a decision, if a match should be played in a country or not. If all these parameters turn out to be severe, there is no way we at CAF will recommend for the match to be played in that country. But in the case where they are all not coming out as severe, where you have some of them that are severe, some are substantial, we then do what is called an in-country risk assessment to the particular venue where the match is to be played. For example, if we have a match in Cairo, we will now do an in-country, in-city assessment of Cairo to find out if Cairo is safe for that match to be done, to be played. So we did this analysis and we came up with identifying eight countries that we classified as high risk for these uh, uh, Nations Cup qualifiers. Uh, and these were based on these parameters that I've initially mentioned. And when we identify a country as a high risk country, what we do from the CAF Safety and Security Department is to assign a CAF Safety and Security Officer to that country to support in the organization of the match. And of course, we also make certain requests from the countries in the, in the event that it is a very serious matter. We ask for security guarantee from the government for the match uh, with specifications to things like um, arrival protocols, uh, access routes, a security plan for the team and the delegation. We ask for hotel security plan. We ask for the stadium security plan itself and the guarantee by the government. And this we did for eight countries, uh, namely Ethiopia, Côte d'Ivoire, South Sudan, Senegal, uh, Comoros, Sudan, Benin, Zimbabwe, and Mali. And out of these eight countries, we had three of them that were very, very high uh, because of the challenges that were going on in the countries that at the time the games were about to be played. And these countries were Ethiopia, Côte d'Ivoire, and Mali. Of course, you know, Mali, there was uh, a situation of instability of government. Uh, in Côte d'Ivoire, there was an election change of government. And in Ethiopia, there is an uncurrent, uh, the current uh, battle going on in Ethiopia now. So these are the countries that we had to send out safety and security officers uh, to monitor. Before then also, I mean, after that, we had to have a meeting. We had a meeting with all the national safety and security officers from each of these countries. Uh, let me say that CAF has trained national safety and security officer for each country's member association. So these national safety and security officers were called in for a meeting and this meeting was held and um, we discussed extensively um, the protocols that have been put in place for these games. You know, the games are not being played under normal conditions. And uh, we also provided uh, to these member associations what we consider as the CAF COVID-19 safety and security guidelines and considerations, which is a document that we put together uh, to guide our member associations on what should be done as far as safety and security is concerned under a COVID-19 uh, uh, conditions. So these are the things that we did, and uh, we continue to follow the events as they unfold. We were in regular contact with our security officers um, throughout the period, and uh, the headquarters was available to provide necessary guidance uh, and leadership in areas that uh, they needed our support. And we are happy to say that the matches were able to be played, and this is one good thing. Uh, there were no major incidents, there was no deaths, uh, there were no crises, uh, um, uh, there were no disruptions of the games as a result of situations in some countries. So every official that went for the games also went back home safely. So this to us is a great plus uh, about the teamwork that we had to put together to deliver these games. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Now we, we, we know more about how you put we, we put that in place. We'll be back during questions. Samson, about competition, about matches, how do your team put that in place? Comment tout cela s'est mis en place et, et aujourd'hui, c'est quoi la suite? Et après, on passera aux questions. Thank you very much, Alexandre. Um, and just like uh, Anthony has said and Christian has said, I will be a bit brief about it, but uh, it's important actually to mention why and how we managed to achieve the success that we, I mean, estimate that this uh, third match day and the fourth match day was. And 
be honest, one of the key success factor is the willingness and availability of everyone and the commitment that everybody had in terms of working together as a team. I'm talking about also internally from the CAP uh, team directly, not only the competition team, but all the other departments. And I mean, everyone put on a different hat. It's not, we all understood that it was not the normal circumstances as it was. So, and also the teams as well, the member associations participating, because it's good to mention and to really to thank all of them, because all of them really were available and were willing to play all the matches. I mean, no one had the spirit of uh, postponing match. We never got any uh, request to postpone the matches because they were all extremely willing to play the matches. So from uh, planning uh, from this competition point of view, uh, it's a long process and I will try to summarize. I mean, firstly, we had the challenge you know, dealing with uh, scheduling the dates that they will play and then also the kickoff time. As you know, we had 48 matches to organize in nine days and across the continent. This has always been a challenge in terms of the uh, release of players from Europe and, and where the national associations, we get their players to play. So it's always very difficult to play at the beginning of the window but we managed to find a way to schedule the matches. And uh, as Christian said, we had the good support from our travel department and also safety and security because they, we had good updates on the restrictions that were from the different countries. So we're able to uh, anticipate where we could have challenges, where also the team is uh, scheduling their trip and maybe there's a connecting flight that is not yet confirmed we try to make sure that the different routes is being uh, proposed to them. So before that, at least we had a lot of meetings with FIFA in terms of planning of the window. And we know that there's going to be challenges with clubs um, wanting to release their star players to go for COVID injuries and all of that. So we anticipated this. So we had a lot of meetings with them on how to deal with it. We established, of course, different steps of what to do. Uh, concerning this, and we had also meetings with all the other confederations as well. As you know, Common Ball played their qualifiers in September, which we didn't play. So the learnings that they had from there was very important for us. So we had a meeting also with them to make sure that this is done. And uh, with the FIFA protocol, which we followed for this uh, uh, March day three and March day four, it was very important. It was a very good guide. And then we came up with a frequently asked questions, the most important uh, parts of the protocol because it's a large document and the ones that are most relevant to our reality in Africa, we did bring it out for them. And we had, we organized the meeting, which is, uh, it was a key meeting that we did with all the 48 member associations, which were going to participate. We spoke to each of them one by one to understand the challenges that they could have to understand also for them to plan in the meeting against the teams that they're playing with. And luckily this match, the three match before, the teams are playing this each order. So it's a home and away match. So it's not different teams that they're playing. So it's easy that we sat in the meeting and they uh, worked out the challenges that the other teams might have. And also in terms of the uh, anything that the other team needed to know. And if we needed to come in on any, any specific aspect we did, coming on that. And we had to even manage some of the kickoff times to change in there. So that meeting was very important for us. It was a long meeting, but the teams appreciated it. And we were able to detect some uh, major challenges that we could have from that. So of course, after that, we did uh, get them. We're following up uh, on a daily basis, what the reality is in the countries. And if anything changed, we were following up with it. So um, we also, as the teams to send us a match preparation sheet, which had everything that needed uh, for the visiting team needed to know and CAF also needed to know in terms of the number of days that they need to be quarantined, how long it take. It took the PCR test to be ready in the country and the ones that have major challenges, uh, we found a way around it and we pushed them also to get government exemptions where it's needed so the team don't need to uh, stay in quarantine for a longer period. For example, Algeria had uh, still travel restrictions there, but they had they were able to get exemptions for the team to uh, travel in there. So these problems, we were able to anticipate it. And to follow the matches, we had a, a group within CAF and with all the different departments that were following the, all the issues in real time and were able to sort out most of the issues. So 
I mean, generally speaking, uh, the success was mainly following up and being able to anticipate the challenges that we could have. Okay. Thank you, Samson. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Uh, merci. 20 minutes que nous parlons. Uh, nous sommes là pour écouter les journalistes. Nous avons reçu uh, quelques questions. On va passer à la deuxième phase. Après les 20 premières minutes, we are moving to question and answers. We receive many questions. Uh, those are still coming. I will be uh, reading the first one, which is from um, Inas Mazar à la Ram Weekly. I don't know whether Inas is online. Are you there, Inas? Inas Mazar à Al Aram Weekly. So the question was with modifications in the inter club competition regulations regarding the number of registered players, is there a chance of adopting the players' replacement rule in the second registration period? Who we'll take this one? Uh, I can Samson. take it. Can you repeat the question? So he said, with modification in the inter-club competitions regulations regarding the number of registered players, is there a chance of adopting the players' replacement rule in the second registration period? Yes, actually, this was uh, discussed and uh, due to the COVID-19, the organizing committee for inter-clubs also uh, approved this change in the regulation. So at least at the last uh, registration period, which is before the group stage, the teams are allowed to replace players that have not been fielded. Not fielded means that you have, the player has not played any match. He didn't come in as a starter or neither as a substitute. So this player can be replaced at the last registration period. So yes. Okay. Alors, je prends une question en ligne qui vient d'arriver. Je vais, je vais aller entre les questions reçues en amont et celles qui arrivent. Alors, euh, Fabien et Sian, lors du prochain Chan, quelles mesures seront-elles prises pour les journalistes accrédités? Les interviews pourront-ils se faire sans problème? Anthony? Euh, D'abord, euh, euh, je crois que ça va être euh, dans ton direction, parce que c'est toi qui es en charge des communications et médias. Non, certainement, euh, vous savez, Samson, il a déjà dit au début, on était en permanent contact avec la FIFA. Notamment, on a, avait été aussi euh, en contact avec l'UEFA pour avoir quelles euh, euh, mesures ils sont pris, euh, tous leurs défis, qui, les challenges qu'ils ont eus. Et parlant des médias, de communication, euh, c'est très important. De, de, ils seront présents, mais il faut toujours euh, euh, avoir la restriction, d'avoir euh, le social distancing, ce qui est très important au niveau des interviews. Il euh, y a un guide, euh, certainement, qui, qui on va leur donner pour le chan, et tout sera très bien expliqué euh, dans ce guide. Mais pour le moment, on planifie vraiment toujours, euh, euh, Dr. Christian Issé, moi je dis toujours au cas où, euh, donc le scénario pire euh, qui peut arriver, le scénario pire qui peut arriver de jouer à huis clos pendant les chambres. Mais euh, en ce moment, on est en train de créer euh, le scénario différent, inclus euh, certainement les médias. Il aura des accréditations, ils seront présents, mais avec des restrictions. Merci. Tout à fait. Un guide très précis sera édicté, euh, le respect des mesures barrières. Euh, on ne prendra pas de risques, mais on, on va créer les conditions pour que la presse puisse euh, accompagner le chan, mais vraiment sans prendre euh, en diminuant au maximum les risques, euh, comme l'a dit Anthony. Donc euh, oui, la presse sera admise pendant le chan, oui, mais dans des conditions très encadrées. Question de Reuters. Ahmed Maher, je ne sais pas s'il est en ligne, vous posez vos questions vous-même. Hein. Les micros sont ouverts, logiquement, pour ceux qui, qui, qui en ont. Est-ce qu'il y a... Alors, je vois quelqu'un euh, qui a levé la main. Votre micro, vous pouvez l'ouvrir. Qui, qui veut les... Alors, je vois... Alors, est-ce que le back-office permettra que des gens posent des questions en ligne Je vois des gens qui ont levé la main, mais est-ce qu'on peut les entendre 
Est-ce qu'on peut les entendre Back-office Est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un qui, qui lève la main, qui prend la parole Question de, de Reuters. How the season will be finished in May, despite the fact that it has not started yet, and is very compact with Shan and AFCOM qualifiers on the schedule? So the um, season definitely will not finish in May. It will finish somewhere in, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in June. It will be finished during the Euros. Sam Nyang of African football. With the club World Cup play in February 2021 in Qatar and the Champions of CAF, Champions League already being there, why not holding the CAF Super Cup at the same windows, like 72 hours before the club World Cup starts? I think uh, we change, we change uh, the venue of, uh, of Super Cup. Awesome. Yeah, we train the venue of Super Cup. I mean, it has a lot of uh, elements to consider. There is also the element of the host uh, for the Super Cup. And as you know, we did uh, go back to the regulations that uh, final, the Super Cup will be played in the venue of the Champions League winners. So it yeah. will be in Egypt in this case, since we have both teams. So we also need to check with the host if they're ready to host the competition and based on the timing that we have. And as you know, we have uh, the Chan also, which is uh, happening almost uh, at the same time. So yeah. 72 hours would be very complicated to be able to organize exactly. it. We're in, com we're in communication with, uh, with the Egyptian Football Federation. At least it's easier for us now. We know who the host is going to be. We know it's going to be in Egypt. So we're in communication exactly. with we find the best things. Yeah. Voilà, c'est clair. Le, le, la finale sera égyptienne. La Super Coupe se tiendra au Caire en Égypte. Et très bientôt, en liaison avec la fédération et les autorités égyptiennes, nous allons euh, indiquer à quelle date elle va se tenir. Sierno Diallo, vous avez le micro. Oui, euh, Égé, bonjour. 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 Je, je, moi, je, ma question s'adresse à, ça, 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 ça elle s'adresse à Anthony à Bafo. Alors, je, je, je voulais savoir, hein, au niveau de la, de la Confédération africaine de football, quelles sont en tout cas les, les mesures. Hein, qui ont été prises pour accompagner surtout les tests COVID. Parce que le problème se pose, exemple, hier à Dakar avec le tournoi IFOA, les Maliens ont été testés euh, positifs, 15 de leurs euh, membres de, de leur équipe, mais ils avaient même annoncé qu'ils n'avaient pas confiance aux tests effectués, réalisés au Sénégal. Et ils voulaient en refaire eux-mêmes. Est-ce que vous pensez pas qu'aujourd'hui, au niveau de la Confédération africaine de football, on aurait pu euh, prendre peut-être des des agents euh, de sécurité, c'est-à-dire au plan euh, test COVID, qui pourraient accompagner pour qu'il y ait plus de transparence et beaucoup plus dans de, le processus. de, de, de fiabilité. OK, ouais, merci Tierno. Ouais. Charlie, on prend trois questions. On prend trois questions par série de trois. Indiquez euh, le, le speaker qui devait répondre à votre question si vous, non, vous avez convenance. Bien, et puis, on, on prend par série de trois. Est-ce que Charlie Mérinos a levé la, a levé la main euh, Oui, oui, je suis là. Bonjour. Bonjour à Alex et à tout le monde, euh, journaliste camerounais. Je crois que l'une des perspectives les plus immédiates, les plus imminentes de la CAF aujourd'hui, c'est le CHAN au mois de janvier prochain au, au Cameroun. Est-ce que selon les critères de la CAF, le Cameroun est un, est un safe country, comme ils l'ont présenté tout à l'heure, pour abriter un événement comme, euh, comme le CHAN est-ce que par rapport aux données euh, sanitaires aujourd'hui qui prévalent dans le pays, y a-t-il possibilité d'envisager un châne avec le public Parce que, à ce que je sache, le Cameroun compte parmi les pays sur le continent et même à l'échelle mondiale qui ont enregistré le moins de cas euh, de Covid, où la maladie se répand le moins et où les techniques de prise en charge sont les plus évoluées. Est-ce que, avec ces données-là, on peut se projeter avec une canne et l'homme public assez consistant dans les stades, et, ou pourquoi pas la première question, est-ce que le Cameroun répond déjà, selon la CAF, à ces critères de santé de, critère de, de safe country Merci Charlie. Troisième question, euh, Karim, qui a levé la main euh, Karim Fezazi Oui, oui. Merci, vous avez la parole. Et, et déclinez toujours votre média si possible, s'il vous plaît. Karim Allô, allô Allô, vous m'entendez Oui, Karim, on vous entend. 
Oui, alors euh, je suis Karim Fizazi, euh, photographe journaliste de AMP du Maroc. J'aurais souhaité savoir est-ce qu'il y a des mesures pour qu'on puisse accéder au terrain, sachant qu'on respecte bien entendu les, les mesures euh, du protocole sanitaire, mais malheureusement au Maroc, on ne peut pas accéder au terrain. Est-ce qu'il y a des mesures que vous avez prévoyées pour qu'on puisse euh, accéder au terrain et pour qu'on puisse faire notre travail Merci. Merci Karim. Alors on Merci. va prendre cette première série. Euh, première question de Tierno, transparence du testing, Dr. Christian, what can you say about the uh, measure we are taking to be sure that the, the, the test is, uh, is kind of confidence, transparency in the process? In the process? If I get you very well, I think you're asking about uh, COVID-19 test yeah. results, yeah. confidentiality and so on. Uh, uh, transparency as well. Question from Tierno. This basically would fall on the medical, but I can, from the experience that we had together, I can say a few things, and I know Anthony will be able to say more. Um, I know that the medical commission in every country that played the match had dedicated doctors that they appointed um, to handle the COVID-19 operations, and confidentiality was key. Uh, For every team that participated, they had to go through the COVID-19 test, and the results had to be sent to CAF headquarters um, before the match. So us to know how many teams uh, or how many players are infected or not. Um, and um, as far as I know, because I saw a few of those emails that uh, communicated, we got information about teams that had uh, issues, and then uh, certain decisions were also taken in that respect. Um, but I do not think that they had any issue or any report of the uh, exposure of the confidentiality clause that is in. What uh, about trust? I think the, the issue was about trusting uh, the hosting medical team. What we did was to appoint, CAF appointed okay. a medical doctor in each venue. Um, and also, I think the protocol also made provision that the host team should make uh, available uh, recommended centers that should be used for testing in the event that uh, there is a disparity in one of the centers that they use. So okay. um, these options were, were made available, I think, for all the teams. Uh, but for every of the country, CAF appointed a medical doctor uh, that was responsible for the COVID-19 operations in each country. Exactly. Et c'est comme ça que nous garantissons la fiabilité des tests. Euh, please, Anthony. Pour, euh, pour ajouter ce que Dr. Christian a dit, euh, précisément, c'était le COVID-19, officier de COVID-19 euh, dans chaque pays, qui, euh, ce qui est aussi dans le euh, euh, protocole international euh, de la FIFA, même dans notre guide, euh, c'est aussi dedans. Euh, Monsieur Ternion, euh, je, je comprends sa, sa question. Euh, et on a aussi un panel euh, des experts qui euh, doit tout évaluer. Euh, mais maintenant, ce qui est passé au Sénégal, euh, nous, euh, on, on a toujours des réunions avec, euh, avec eux pour savoir euh, et on, on apprend de, de cette éliminatoire euh, qui sont passées, qu'on euh, doit aussi planifier euh, euh, des autres choses au niveau euh, de la sécurité. Mais on va faire notre union interne et puis on va envisager tout ça aussi. Euh, pour le moment, et on peut dire, pendant les qualifications, euh, grâce à Dieu, ça s'est quand même euh, très bien passé. Anthony, tu vas garder la parole parce que la mm -hmm. prochaine question concerne le CHAN et ensuite, mm -hmm. c'est toi qui as conduit la délégation de la CAF, la dernière mission d'observation de la CAF au Cameroun. Euh, Charlie, est-ce que le Cameroun est considéré comme un safe country sont les critères édictés par Dr. Christian au début, etc. Est-ce qu'au Cameroun, nous considérons que les conditions sont réunies pour que le champ se tienne et que le public, partiellement ou entièrement, soit dans les stades euh, Moi, je vais parler de ce que j'ai senti, mais l'expert au niveau de sécurité, c'est Dr. Christian. Donc, je uh, uh, I said Dr. Christian that um, uh, I will say, um, I will speak about our inspection visit. But going more into details, you are the expert, and I would like you to continue. Um, when I was in Cameroon, 
je sentis qu'il y avait euh, la sécurité et puis euh, on était toujours guidé, c'était très bien organisé. Et euh, ce que je disais aussi dans un interview avant, que le Cameroun est sur la bonne voie. Donc, euh, euh, ce qui est important maintenant au niveau des détails de la sécurité, euh, Dr. Christian va continuer, même euh, au niveau de COVID aussi, bien sûr, on fait nos investigations. Euh, le docteur, ils nous ont dit pour le moment, euh, le Cameroun contrôle euh, la pandémie. Donc, euh, euh, ce qui va passer en janvier, euh, c'est seulement le bon Dieu euh, qui sait ça. Merci. Dr. Christian. Thank you very much. Uh, if I get to you very clearly, um, you want to know the security situation in Cameroon. If it's the safe. assessment you the assessment you did and where are we today? Can we consider that Cameroon is a safe place for competition like China? Let me start by saying that with what we have seen uh, and the interactions we have had, we do not have any fears about the capabilities of the government and people of Cameroon manage the security situation in that country. Uh, we are not unmindful of the challenges that the country is passing through within the southern hemisphere of Cameroon. Uh, we are also closely monitoring that event. Uh, as you know, security situations are dynamic. And uh, But what is most important is what is the government doing? Uh, at least for us, is key. And we have seen so far that the government is still able to on top of the situation as far as Southern Cameroon is concerned. And uh, various engagements with the authorities, uh, security apparatus has further reinforced the confidence in us that um, we will be having one of the um, best events in terms of safety and security operations. I don't want to say more than that, but we are working uh, very closely with Cameroon and uh, Cameroon will actually be one of the countries that will be hosting a CAF event um, that will be enjoying one of our experiments. Because what we did was to invite the head of uh, the current head of Cameroon Safety and Security Operations, the LOC, to be part of the CAF Safety and Security Officers for the Afghan villages, so that he can understudy and uh, see how we do things operationally from uh, a sport safety and security point of view. So that has really helped us to have somebody in Cameroon that understands exactly what we are talking about. So uh, unlike when we go to countries and we have to start trying to convince people to understand what we are talking about. Here we have a case where we have already trained somebody in the course of an Afghan tournament to see what is happening and how it should be done. And he is currently being supported by the LOC to deliver. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Karim, euh, pour le Maroc, reporter photographe, euh, Karim, la CAF a émis un protocole très précis, amélioré d'ailleurs, sur les conditions de participation de la presse et des reporters, euh, photographes, caméramans, aux compétitions et aux matchs. Nous allons, euh, c'est des recommandations faites aux fédérations, associations membres, évidemment qu'elles ont sur place. Euh, elles peuvent sur place euh, les suivre ou parfois les amender, mais nous avons euh, indiqué sous quelles conditions les photographes et reporters peuvent entrer dans les stades. Nous allons renvoyer, s'il le faut, à la Fédération marocaine royale cette, euh, ces recommandations afin que vous puissiez faire votre travail dans le respect, évidemment, des, des, des règles et de sanitaires édictées pour cette période. Donc, c'est ce que je peux vous dire rapidement sur votre question relative aux difficultés que vous avez pour accéder au stade pendant les matchs. On prend trois autres questions. Euh, on en a reçu. Alors, je vais lire la question de Emma, euh, Emmanuel Paris de l'AFP. <coughs> Emmanuel Paris, can we expect more delays or cancelling of some of competition if the situation gets worse and will be taken into consideration if any competition is cancelled? Uh, if the situation goes war, can we can we expect more delays? Uh, now it's not the trend. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, we do everything that we can in our power not to uh, cancel any competition or any match. But if we're forced to, 
we would do what is necessary as the safety of uh, the security of the players is a priority for us. That we will never compromise. Yeah. We will never compromise that. So unless that is being in question, that's the only time we'll consider canceling a, or rescheduling a tournament or a match. But we are, we don't know how long the virus is going to be. So we're living with it right now and doing everything that we can. But uh, like I said, safety and security of the players is the key priority and the key factor we use in determining if a match is to be postponed or to be canceled. Clearly, safety and security of all participants and stakeholders of each match priority for number one for us. Okay, that's it. The priority number one. Okay, thank you. Um, Fami, I'm a member of B in Sport. Taking into consideration the very tight schedule for next season, especially for countries who are yet to start their domestic leagues like Egypt, will it be more sensible to skip? the quarterfinals if cap interclub competition this time and take the four group winners in each competition directly to semifinals. Does no, that we, we yes, yes, we uh hello Am first of all, Am is a friend. Hmm. Uh so we consider different options for the format for the interclubs for this next season, which we're going to start in about a week time anyway. And this option also was considered. But as I said, we do everything not to disrupt the format of the competition and not to disrupt uh, because there are also a lot of obligations from a marketing, from a TV point of view, the number of games that CAP needs to do. Mm -hmm. But um, we will go with the normal format according to the plans that we have now. We can play and complete the next season. Uh, not in the normal time, as somebody asked earlier, if it was going to be finished in May, it's not going to be finished in May, it's in July. But we have uh, experience actually, we'll reprogram the competition. If it, by any chance there's going to be further delay due to the virus, if it evolves and gets completely out of hand, we would adjust accordingly. But for now, we are managing it. And we also had the experience of the transitional season. So we uh, we basically played in almost in the same time that we're playing right now. So this is not a problem, but we evaluated it. And thank you for the suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe to to add to what Samson said, um, uh, when we do these things, um, uh, the committee must always be involved. And uh, we always plan with uh, all the worst case scenario. And uh, Samson and his team are quite uh, in control of this. And like he said, uh, the experience is there. And uh, uh, as you have seen, uh, this is not the first time we are going through this. So uh, uh, I'm rest assured that uh, uh, we, we are on top of it. Thank you, sir. Je prends des questions en ligne. Um, Fateh Benamou, au cas où le virus corona continuerait à se propager, quel est le sort des activités sportives? Je pense qu'on vient de répondre à cette question. Hamza Ramouni pour Anthony Bafo, dans le document que la CAF a mis à la disposition des médias, Frequently Asked Question, il est clairement mentionné qu'un test PCR doit être effectué 48 heures plus tôt, euh, 48 heures plus tôt du match. Par contre, les contaminations à la COVID-19 peuvent se faire à J-1 du match et même le jour J pour éviter tous les soupçons. La CAF envisage tel des tests antigènes à 2h03 avant le match, puisque les résultats de ce test sont rapides. Euh, euh, merci, merci euh, Hamza. Et bonjour aussi euh, Hamza, il est en Algérie. Euh, pour vous dire, euh, vous savez, maintenant on a pris une bonne expérience des de matchs de CC et CL, de demi-finale. Après, on a euh, les expériences au niveau des qualifications. Et après ça, on, on se réunit à chaque fois avec euh, la commission médicale aussi pour euh, évaluer la situation. Ce qu'on peut faire mieux, euh, ce qui, qui n'est pas bien passé. Et après, quand on va faire ça, on va revenir si on reste sur cette mesure ou on fait le test rapide euh, euh, le jour des matchs même. Donc, euh, pour le moment, euh, on n'a pas encore envisagé, mais dès qu'on finit la, la réunion au niveau de, 
évaluer la situation, on revient vers vous. Merci. Thank you, Anthony. Question, uh, question to Dr. Christian by Ellen Shuenga. Doctor, do match agents have to contact CAF for security and permission to organize international friendly games with European clubs in the eight countries you mentioned? Directly, CAF does not deal with match agents. Uh, and um, I, I know that for every match agent that wants to organize international matches, it's a private business, so to speak. And uh, for the host country, you deal basically with the, with the host FA uh, in organizing your matches at the, at the local, uh, at the whatever country you decide to host. Um, but for these countries that we have just mentioned, uh, it's not to say that things have not improved in some of them. Um, we are only giving a report about what we saw before the 48 games were played. Uh, as I did mention earlier, but that security situations are quite unpredictable across the entire globe now. So I would only recommend to any match agent conduct his or her due diligence before going to any country to organize the and get this due diligence by uh, getting the services of some of these uh, risk advisory companies that we have in time to assist you in giving uh, information about what is happening in the country. If I may just add very quickly, if I may add to that, for any international friendly match that we played on the continent, the Federation usually asks uh, for requests that is is approved for between CAF and FIFA for international friendly match request. Uh, and we have to approve those matches to happen. And we approve those matches based on uh, the situation that's globally. So if there's any country that uh, safety and security department flag up, we might have to ask the member associations to provide clarity on the situation before approving that particular match. So. We know of all the matches that are happening and then we are the ones to give the approval. And if there's a red flag, we usually wouldn't just give the approval. And this is done in collaboration with FIFA as well. Thank you, Samson. The question en ligne, tout à l'heure, j'ai vu Juet qui avait, Juet Bell avait levé le... Est-ce qu'il y a des questions en ligne, en direct? Est-ce que vous, est-ce qu'il y a des questions en ligne? Vous vous signalez? Très bien, Juet, vous prenez la parole. Oui, bonjour. Bonjour. Vous m'entendez? Très bien, on vous entend très bien, monsieur. D'accord. Je, je, je vous remercie. Je suis monsieur Bell. Je suis le directeur du magazine Afrique Sport. Euh, oui. J'aimerais tout d'abord euh, vous féliciter pour cette parole que vous nous donnez, parce que ça n'a pas toujours été le cas de faire participer les médias, surtout africains, au niveau de, du fonctionnement de la CAF. Euh, ce qui nous permet effectivement de vous accompagner dans votre, dans votre communication. Euh, félicitations pour ça. Et j'espère que vous allez continuer dans cette lancée. Euh, J'ai deux questions en fait. La première se situe au niveau des tests. On a constaté beaucoup de dysfonctionnements. Je reviens un peu sur la précédente question, mais j'aimerais insister là-dessus. Euh, parce que nous sommes à Africain, et nous savons comment ça se passe en Afrique. Nous avons constaté pas mal de dysfonctionnements au niveau des pays d'accueil où il nous est revenu que certains pays ne jouaient pas le jeu. Euh, je vais vous prendre l'exemple de certains joueurs qui ont été testés positifs sur le continent et une fois revenus en club, ont participé à des matchs aujourd'hui. Comment expliquer que quelqu'un qui a été testé il y a moins d'une semaine se retrouve en train de jouer en championnat européen. Ça, je pense que la CAF devrait effectivement se pencher sérieusement sur ce problème-là, parce que nous, nous connaissons tous comment ça se passe en Afrique. Euh, la deuxième question se situe au niveau de l'accueil. Nous avons tous été choqués par le cas du Gabon, qui a vécu un cauchemar au niveau africain et au niveau mondial, en fait. Donc, euh, et sachez que l'image, en fait, que nous L'image que nous donnons aux autres 
est très importante. Que prévoit la CAF pour ce genre de dysfonctionnement Il n'y a pas que le Gabon qui a été euh, la cible d'un mauvais accueil. Nous avons été euh, contactés par d'autres pays qui se plaignent de la qualité de l'accueil par les pays qui les recevaient. Quelles sont les mesures que la CAF prévoit pour ne plus se retrouver dans cette mauvaise... Merci, ah. merci, merci pour, ce, pour ces deux questions très, très, très précises. Euh, Est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un d'autre Merci, M. Bell, merci, c'est gentil. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres questions en ligne Est-ce qu'il y a une autre personne qui prend la parole en ligne non. Alors, je vais non. lire une question. Euh, oui, c'est Fasma Saba. You have the floor. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. You're welcome. Uh, my question is to Anthony Before, related to the updates on the CAF website, which we are very often, when we go there, we don't find, um, like at presently, the CAF competitions for the CAF Confederations Cup, the CAF Champions League. There is, the information is not very timely updated in terms of like the match venues, and yet it's just a week ago, a week to go. So, is it possible that we have this information updated in real time on the CAF website, such that it's either as a tickle or we can find it in real time, so we can know how to retrieve this information in a timely way? Could we have this information about these matches updated, please? Thank you, sir. Uh, three questions. Let's uh, try to answer the two from Mr. Bell and the one for Masaba. Mr. Bell, uh, first question. Who, who handled it? Christian, Dr. Christian? About the test. Does that make sense, what he said? Did you hear about, about I can social? answer the question about the test, actually. Okay, thank you, Samson. All right. <laughs> so what we did in the CAF uh, protocol is that we said any team that is a, a host team should communicate to the visiting team to government approved laboratories where they can do the test and give one recommended one mm. just in case there is any doubt from the visiting team in terms of the results so they have enough time to do another test to get the results which was uh, maybe some of the cases This is also answering to Hamza's question earlier, why we cannot do the test 24, uh, less than 48 hours before, so that we have enough uh, room in case uh, a team or player needs to be retested. So this is what we did in case of any elements of doubt. We did send to all the member associations, they need to give two or three labs, government approved labs where, and because also the teams are responsible for their own tests, so it's easier To, if you have any doubts, you can go to another lab that is approved by the government and do the test and you're paying for the test to get the results in there. Now, in the question of um, maybe a player testing negative uh, in the national team and playing for his club, you know how the virus uh, evolves. There's, we have little control to what we can do concerning that. It's very possible that he did another test and it's uh, negative. But for us, we only follow the result of the test that we receive and it's from government approved labs. It's not the federations that have the labs, it's from the government. So this is what we go by and this is what we've uh, gone through. Any team that has any doubts, we get them to do a test in an independent uh, government approved lab just to make sure that the test is not uh, contestable. Okay. Yeah, so that's that question concerning that. I don't know if Anthony wants to take the other question related to Gabon and Gambia. Or... Yes, yes. Um, merci. Thank you, uh, Samson. Um, um, bien sûr que nous, au niveau de la Confédération de football africain, on n'était aussi pas content de voir toutes ces images qui, euh, qui sont notamment pas une bonne image pour le football euh, en Afrique. Mais euh, je crois que la plupart des de, de, de matchs Uh, on, a, on a vraiment bien géré. Uh, parlant des cas de Gabon, on a immédiatement fait une réunion d'urgence de, de um, avec le, le parti prenant, notamment le président de la fédération gabonais, le secrétaire, le vice-président de la fédération gambien, inclut le secrétaire général de la fédération gambien, 
Donc, euh, il faut toujours écouter les deux côtés avant de, de vraiment prendre, euh, prendre acte. Nous, dans ce moment, on a bien écouté, on a fait nos investigations. Maintenant, le cas est avec la commission disciplinaire. Donc, euh, euh, je suis tout à fait d'accord qu'il ne faut pas que ça se reproduise. Donc, euh, on, on va voir euh, ce que la commission disciplinaire va décider. Et puis, nous, entre-temps, on pense aux, aux mesures où on peut vraiment éviter, euh, euh, peut éviter vraiment ça pour, euh, euh, pour, pour ne pas donner une, une image comme ça. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Et pour terminer, la, la, le dernier point relatif au site web, je pourrais just say to Mr. Masaba that our website is now in this kind of transitional period. We can take the commitment that uh, by the end of next month, you will be able to, to fix that and update as soon as um, in real time information on competition. We'll be working with our, with our colleague of competition department. We are reinforcing our team so that to be able in in a short period of time to give you uh, uh, info, update information on our competition on in real time on our website. So you are right. Sometimes there is a delay on, the, on that. We are not exactly on the high level standard now. It's a transitional period and uh, we beg your pardon. We will be able to do that by the end of next month, definitively. Next question. Who asks Francis Bacapa, are you there? Francis? Oh, Eli... Bonjour, bonjour. Ok, vous avez bonjour. la parole, Francis. Bonjour. Oui, bonjour. Je vais m'adresser au secrétaire Anthony. Alors, euh, dans une semaine, il y a la finale de la Champions League africaine qui opposera les deux, deux grands clubs euh, africains, Al-Ali et euh, le Zamalek. Alors, qu'a prévu euh, la CAF pour les hommes de médias Est-ce qu'il euh, y aura une accréditation pour les hommes de la, des médias afin de couvrir euh, cette belle fête On sait tous qu'aujourd'hui, avec euh, la COVID-19 qui fait des ravages, euh, ce n'est pas évident d'avoir non seulement le public, mais aussi euh, les hommes de médias. Alors, est-ce que la CAF a prévu euh, quelque chose pour que les, les hommes de médias puissent vivre euh, cette fête-là. Merci. Monsieur Francis, euh, je crois que c'est plutôt euh, dirigé au directeur de communication. Euh, oui. Donc, euh, il, il peut vous bien répondre. OK. Dans, euh, merci, Francis. Euh, alors, dans, dans le, nous, nous sommes en train de vous le dire, la fête du football doit reprendre, mais dans le respect des mesures qui préservent la santé et la sécurité des différents acteurs. Dans les prochains jours, il y a une réunion technique ce matin sur la finale. Dans les prochains jours, nous allons communiquer des, 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 un protocole très précis pour cette, pour cette finale. Donc, retenez que nous avons une préoccupation importante de faire que la fête du football reprenne, que la presse puisse continuer à faire son travail. Mais on vous l'a dit depuis le début, la sécurité, la santé des différents acteurs, c'est la priorité numéro un. Et c'est en fonction d'elle et de la six semaines, la six semaines, euh, l'audit qui est mené, que nous allons euh, arrêter des protocoles très précis. Dans les prochains jours, vous allez savoir exactement comment ça va se passer pour la finale de la Champions League. Exactement. Il y avait euh, quelqu'un qui voulait prendre... Eli, Eli Ben Salah, de Radio... Eli Ayouder. Euh, il est, il est, il est Ben Salah. Ayouder Ben Salah, yes, you have the floor. Sorry if I can. Um, J'ai gâché ton nom. Uh, Iles, Iles, Ben Salah. Est-ce que son micro est ouvert, s'il vous plaît? Ben Salah, radio euh, d'une radio, radio Tunisia. Voilà, Ben Salah de ouais. Tunisie. You have the floor. Uh, la parole. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, it's Ilias Ben Salah from D1 FM Radio Tunisia. Thank you. I'm sorry. I will improve my Aradi, go on. Okay, so uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to the journalist. Uh, um, I, ha I have a very important question. Uh, how will coordination between the Confederation of African Football and journalists 
who will cover the matches of the African club competitions. And thank you. Sorry, say it again. Uh, I said, I said, I have a, a very important question. How will coordination between the Confederation of African uh, Football and uh, the journalists who will cover the matches of the African clubs' competitions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Taye Ola Ide, are you there? Taye Ola Ide, are you there? Welcome, you have the floor, sir. I hope I spell well your name. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I will improve that as well. Yes, you are there. Open the microphone of Mr. Taye, please. Back office. Mr. Taye is there on the screen, but uh, the microphone is uh, not open. Open your, your microphone, sir. I can do that for you. You are the one to do that. Taye, are you there? Back office, can you help him to open the microphone, Charlotte? He left? Okay. Uh, he was on the screen, but he left. Victor Elias Séché, are you there? Bonjour. Victor? Victor, à la parole. You have the floor, Victor. Micro non ouvert non plus. Charlotte, ouvrez le micro de Victor, s'il vous plaît. Victor, are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And uh, thank you very much for this great opportunity. Je tiens à vous remercier pour cette opportunité. Et la, ma question va vers, vers mon grand frère du Ghana, M. Anthony Bafo. Et je voudrais savoir quelle est, quelle est la feuille de route de votre compétition féminine que vous avez apportée pour les clubs féminins de tout le continent africain. Merci. I would like to know what is the roadmap for the new competition that you brought for female clubs in Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, um, I think uh, Samson will complete later. Um, first of all, uh, uh, we had uh, eight teams uh, in an AFCON before. Now we have 12 teams. Uh, um, subsequently, we are going to launch uh, next year. And next year, don't forget, it's already around the corner. Um, the new CAF Women's Champions League. We also uh, came out with the women's football strategy. Um, pour vous dire en français, excuse-moi, parce que je crois que vous êtes euh, bientôt francophone, euh, plutôt francophone. Um, on a uh, déjà commencé avec, pour augmenter les équipes de 8 à 12 l'année prochaine. Et l'année prochaine, c'est juste euh, dans nos coins. Um, on va uh, commencer avec uh, la Champions League uh, féminin. À part ça, on a aussi créé la stratégie de euh, football féminin. Euh, on s'est aussi réunis avec toutes les parties prenantes euh, regardant le football féminin. Euh, on a inclus les joueurs pour aussi écouter les joueurs. Et pour vous dire, euh, la plupart des joueurs, ils sont posés des questions. Pourquoi pendant le, le, le match international euh, de, de la FIFA, ils jouent jamais euh, le féminin, les femmes jouent jamais des matchs. Donc tout ça, c'était pris en considération et on a communiqué, communiqué ça aussi aux, aux associations membres et euh, pour voir euh, euh, la suite. On s'est aussi euh, la dernière fois réuni avec euh, euh, la Fédération royale euh, marocaine de football qui sont un très, très, très bien euh, programme au niveau de football euh, féminin euh, qui vont vraiment professionnaliser le football féminin euh, donner des salaires pas seulement aux joueuses mais aussi aux encadreurs et on avait fait une très bonne réunion on, on va coopérer aussi pour voir de créer des, euh, des autres programmes pilotes pour les autres associations membres donc euh, vraiment je vous dis ça de, de, de fond de cœur moi euh, c'est une de mes grandes priorités dans mon département de football et développement euh, de, de développer vraiment le football euh, féminin. Merci. 
Merci, Anthony. Nous allons prendre la question de Uri Lévy et Eric, Ma Eric Mamrut Mamrut, Eric Mamrut de RFI. Euh, Est-ce qu'il est là, Eric? On va prendre Eric Mamrut et puis Uri Lévy, les deux prochaines questions. Sinon, la question relative à la coordination avec les médias. Je vais redire à celui qui a posé la question. Il y aura un protocole très précis pour rendre possible la couverture des compétitions dans le respect scrupuleux du protocole santé, sécurité, retour au football de la CAF. La presse, c'est pour ça que nous sommes là avec vous. Oui, la presse va pouvoir accéder sous certaines conditions à nos compétitions. Eric Mamrut et puis Uri Lévy, vous avez la parole. Oui, bonjour messieurs, bonjour, euh, bonjour tout le monde, j'espère que vous allez bien. Euh, question à Anthony, bonjour Anthony. Par rapport au, au tournoi de la zone UFOA qui se déroule actuellement à Dakar, qui a démarré avec le problème dans l'équipe malienne, beaucoup de cas de Covid qui euh, ça a obligé l'annulation du, du match. Est-ce que vous êtes inquiet par rapport à cette situation Est-ce que l'équipe malienne va pouvoir rejouer et est-ce que même il y a une menace sur la suite de, de ce tournoi Merci Eric. Euh, Uri, et puis on répond. Uri Lévy, vous avez la parole Yes, can you, can you hear me, guys Nice, go on, please. Yeah, so first of all, I want to thank you all. It's a very enlightening and interesting afternoon. Uh, my question is regarding uh, this season uh, CAF Champions League semi-finals which were decided to be played in a double header format, one game in Egypt and one game in uh, Morocco for both uh, Raja Zamalek and uh, Alali uh, with that. What, what was behind this decision? Because we, everybody understood, and I believe you all in CAF uh, also understood that this can cause a, a major infection event, what eventually took place, like a what happened in Raja and who played with a short roster and were exhausted in the second leg in Cairo. Why not playing the CAF Champions League on the same format that you, you played the CAF Confederation Cup, which were, was excellent, uh, you know, a very busy week, but with a clear uh, resolution, a more sportive uh, resolution for the competition. What was behind this decision? And thank you again for this afternoon. Thank you, Uri. We answer to Eric and Uri. And then Mohamed Gamal and Lassana Kamara, be ready. Gentlemen, we answer to the first of this question. First Hello? from Eric. Anthony, about Eric Mahmoud, Mali. Um, but, uh, bonjour d'abord, uh, Eric. Il y a Samson uh, qui était en contact direct uh, avec le Sénégal qui va, qui va euh, répondre à ces questions parce que moi, j'étais en train de voyager. Et puis, euh, c'est Samson qui, qui peut répondre à ces questions. Thank you, Anthony. Concerning the WAFU competition that Mali had a lot of players that were tested uh, positive. I mean, this is an unfortunate case, but also from our point of view, this is why we put rules and regulation in place before the match. And before the competition, actually, CAF did um, add an additional 10 players for the teams, because normally uh, the number of players they're supposed to travel with because of the COVID-19 situation and also linked to the other question that um, Yuri did ask about uh, the Raja situation, what we did before the competition, that there's additional 10 players that the teams had to add just to be able to uh, deal with COVID-19 situation in case uh, a number of players were tested positive. Unfortunately, Mali did not use this option. They did not travel with additional players. They only went with 20 players when they had the opportunity to go with about 30 players. So they had uh, eight players, I think, that were tested positive. And in our COVID-19 uh, protocol, we said that a minimum of 15 players, 10, 11 players on the pitch, including one goalkeeper and four substitutes, and the match must uh, continue. And they have less than that. That's why uh, the regulation is actually for them not to be eliminated from the competition. They just lose the match 2-0, hoping that before their next match, they will have uh, enough players to be able to play uh, the match and I think they just did another test today and they were waiting for the results so they should be able to play the next match but as you can imagine it would be unfortunate and we can have this kind of situation in different teams and I think Senegal 
because they're at home, they took all the other options. And the other teams also, some of them travel with more than the 20 players just so that you can deal with this situation. So that's the situation concerning Mali right now. We're following up very closely with them. And for the second question concerning the Champions League uh, final, I mean, this is our wish to play it like we played the CC. But as you know, before actually the pandemic, earlier during the year, the venue of the finals were decided that CC will be played in Morocco and Champions League will be played in Cameroon. But as the situation evolved, Cameroon were not able to host the final of the Champions League due to the COVID-19 situation because they're dealing with it. And we have launched the bid for to all the member associations to find a new host. But unfortunately, we did not get a new host. And Morocco for CC uh, decided to host the semi-final because they were going to host the final and they had two teams in uh, in the semi-final list, so it's easier for them and they hosted it. Now, since we did not have a host for the final of the Cup Champions League, we couldn't just select a random uh, host for it. And because you had two Egyptian teams and two Moroccan teams, we couldn't select just one of the venues. That's why we did a draw to determine the venue of the final. And it was Egypt that was going to be in the final if it was going to be a Moroccan team and an Egyptian team. But luckily now we have two uh, Egyptian team, so we are doing it in Egypt. But as at the time, we did not know who the venue of the final was going to be, and that's why we had to play it home and away. We didn't have any other option, but in terms of fair play, we had to play it uh, home and away because we didn't have a venue. Merci, Samson. Nous avons franchi la première heure. C'était pour une heure. On va encore euh, dix minutes avec vous. Euh, comme je l'ai dit, c'est une première et il y en aura d'autres. Donc, nous allons prendre les trois dernières questions. Dix minutes, questions courtes, s'il vous plaît, et, et nous allons euh, libérer nos speakers et vous remercier. Mohamed Gamal, Lassana Kamara et Claubert et Yompan vont clôturer ce premier CAF Talk euh, de euh, cette année. Gamal, une question courte, s'il vous plaît. Lassana Kamara, une question courte. Vous êtes là ou pas? Uh, hello. Yeah, Kamal, welcome. Hello, uh, that's me. Salut, so, salut to you, uh, Anthony, Samson, and uh, Christian. Uh, I have uh, just two fast questions. Uh, the first one uh, regarding the final protocol and the procedure for uh, two, uh, 2021 competitions. How many pl players are available to be replaced for the second registration period? And regarding the numbers, will it be 40 or 30 as usual? Well, this is the first question to Samson. And the second question, regarding the final match of the African Champions League, will you, will you permit the attendance of the fans and how much will it be? This is Thank my you, two sir. Questions. Thank you, Mohamed. Lassana Kamara, vous êtes là? Lassana est-il là? Il a demandé la parole. Non, je ne vois pas. Claubert, euh, Claubert Yopan, est-ce que vous êtes là? Claubert? Non, je ne vous vois pas. En tout cas, les questions, nous allons répondre à toutes les questions que vous avez envoyées. Ah, Clobert est apparu à l'écran. Clobert, vous avez la parole pour votre question, s'il vous plaît. Allons-y. Ouvrez le micro de Clobert, s'il vous plaît. Clobert. Question courte. Allons-y. Oui, vous me suivez Très bien. Ah, euh, voilà, merci. Et déjà, félicitations pour la prise de fonction. Euh, la question est celle de savoir si le chan devant se tenir au Cameroun peut être considéré comme un test pouvant conditionner l'organisation de la future campagne au Cameroun. Euh, la CAF se réservant bien évidemment euh, le droit de retirer la canne au Cameroun si le chan était un fiasco sanitaire, sécuritaire, infrastructurel et même populaire. Et à Anthony, sur quel point lui qui était... Il n'y a pas longtemps au Cameroun. Le Cameroun devrait-il faire des efforts pour être prêt au jour J? Merci. Merci euh, à vous. Euh, merci. Je pense que ce sera la dernière question. J'espère qu'on n'a oublié aucune question. On a balayé tout le monde. Ce sera la... On voulait prendre une troisième, mais là, je crois que les deux sont déjà pas mal. On va répondre. Euh, on va répondre. Pour terminer. Samson? Yes. Uh, so for the first uh, question is in terms of the number of uh, players. So for all CAF competitions that uh, we have a definite list like the interclubs, uh, the emergency committee 
added 10 extra players. So for the second registration period, the teams have opportunity of adding 10 players. So instead of 30, it would be 40. And for replacement of players is the last window of the registration, which we allow for three players, a uh, maximum of three players to be able to be replaced just in case uh, uh, the players haven't been fielded. So they can replace three players at the last uh, registration period, but the squad has been increased to 40 just to be able to deal with the situation. So that's the answer to the first uh, question. Uh, for the second question, yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah. For for the second question, can uh, maybe just repeat the second question? Gamal? I think it was last time I asked the uh, second yes, question. Yes, yes. The second, the second question was uh, regarding the final match of the African Champions League, Ahli and Zamalek. Will you permit the attendance of the fans and how much will it be? Okay. Uh, so we had a meeting today with the authorities and this issue was discussed and uh, from between uh, now to maximum of Wednesday we would have a final answer but of course it's uh, it's it's a great and rare opportunity that we have that the final will be played in Egypt and it's between Ali and Zamalek so it will be a shame not to play with fans CAF would want to uh, give the opportunity to the fans uh, to watch their teams playing in the Cup uh, Champions League since it's the two home teams. But of course, we're, uh, in, with security and medical and also with Egyptian authorities evaluating the situation surrounding it and to see how much approval the government will give for the fans and if uh, the measures will be strictly respected. And if not, we'll probably unfortunately, unfortunately play without fans. So we are hoping we want to play with fans, but uh, security and safety measures are still right. being evaluated. Samson, that was my last question. Thank you, sir, for coming. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Anthony, open this talk and it will be the last to, I was want to take the floor. Anthony, tu as ouvert yeah. cette, ce premier CAF talk et mm. je te remercie de répondre et de ainsi clôturer également cette, uh, cette première mm. édition. Merci beaucoup. Est-ce qu'ils peuvent me permettre d'être en vidéo parce que je suis toujours... Uh... Alors, back office, on ne voit pas Anthony. Qu'est-ce qui se passe? Bon, Alors. Je... <coughs> bon euh, je tiens d'abord au nom de euh, Président Mart et la Confédération de football africain de vous remercier pour euh, participer d'abord. Euh, aussi, merci à toi, Alexandre, pour cette euh, très bonne initiative. Je crois que c'est très important de faire ça, euh, comme on dit, <coughs> excuse-moi, de temps en temps, et même pendant le champ, euh, euh, d'avoir un car talk aussi avec les départements différents. Euh, les questions vous étaient très, très intéressantes. Et puis nous, on prend de tout ça euh, aussi quand on se réunit avec euh, notre équipe, euh, ce qu'on peut améliorer, ce qu'on peut faire encore mieux que qu'avant. Qu Mais sachez que nous, nous travaillons 24 heures sur 24. Euh, nous sommes toujours euh, en communication. Euh, vous voyez euh, rarement, euh, Monsieur Samson ou Dr. Christian, que notre email est out of office. Non, ça n'existe pas avec nous. On travaille pour le continent et puis on veut vraiment aller en avance. I also want to thank uh, the English listeners for uh, joining us. This is not the first and it's not the last cup talk. I'd like to thank uh, Alexander for this uh, really great uh, initiative. And um, uh, I believe that it is very, very important to continue um, this with also different departments and uh, uh, the Chan is also coming in uh, Cameroon, uh, inshallah. And even during the Chan, we can organize something like that I think it was very, very fruitful. We continue uh, with this way. I wish you all well. Uh, stay safe. And please uh, take good care of yourself because uh, COVID is not over yet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anthony. On n'a pas eu de femmes à cette, uh, ce premier talk. Je, je, je sais un peu dommage. On espérait bien avoir aussi des journalistes femmes. Thank you, Dr. Christian, for your time. Thank you very much. Merci, Samsung. Merci, mesdames et messieurs. Merci à tous pour votre temps en dimanche après-midi. 
nous étions à peu près une soixantaine en ligne pendant une heure et un peu plus. Merci à vous, bonne fin de journée et très bientôt pour un prochain Calf Talk, Calf Talk sur d'autres sujets qui vous préoccupent et qui nous intéressent. Au revoir, merci. Merci, merci.